Today, we're going to walk through why the Service Stack Blazor WASM or WebAssembly template for .NET 8 can be one of the most productive ways to build your next line of business application. The Blazor WebAssembly or WASM template for .NET 8 integrates hosted Service Stack services with a Blazor WASM client, and thanks to the message-centric design of Service Stack services, it encourages a clean decoupling of the client and the server by clearly defining the boundary between your client and your hosted API. Service Stack services always require the declaration of message objects when creating your service APIs. Defining part of your service contracts, these data transfer objects represent the request and response data structures that will be sent and returned from your services. These DTOs can be translated into other languages and used by the client integrating with your services, providing a typed end-to-end -end integration. This separation usually comes with a small amount of additional work to maintain that typed end-to-end -end integration when orchestrating changes between your server and client. For example, regardless of if you're building a TypeScript web client or a mobile app using the Swift language, you need to be able to keep your shared data structures between the clients and the server in sync. We make this process easier using Service Stack's Add Service Stack Reference feature, which can be used for most major IDEs and through other CLI tooling. Every time a server data structure changes, we can update our respective client data structures using one of these tools pretty quickly. But this does still take some time and adds some friction to the development process. However, since Blazor WASM also allows us to have the same language, c -sharp, on both the client and the server, we can leverage all the advantages of well-defined service stack APIs without any of the drawbacks of representing shared data structures in different languages. This makes the development model of building a Blazor WebAssembly application with service stack an extremely productive one. Today, we'll be walking through step-by-step -step an example of adding a new feature to the existing booking example application that comes with the template. First, to start our project from the Blazor WASM template, we can use the servicestack.net x tool and the command x new blazor wasm space myapp, where myapp is the name of your project. Opening our new solution and running it for the first time, we have several example features on the left hand side, including a simple bookings application. This bookings application persists bookings on the server and presents them within the Blazor WebAssembly interface. This interface is using the Service Stack Blazor Components library and the auto query grid component to create, read, update, and delete our bookings from this page. To demonstrate the productive workflow you get by combining Blazor WebAssembly and Service Stack, we're going to extend the bookings example application by adding a rating and feedback feature. This feature will require changes to both the Blazor front end as well as the Service Stack back end to get the behavior we want. Starting with the back end, we want to be able to persist both the feedback and the rating on the server as well as communicate this data in the request and response DTOs. This example booking application uses the service stack auto query service feature that integrates with ORM Lite and a SQLite database to persist our data. We represent our booking table using a plain old c -sharp object or POCO, just like we would for any other table we were querying with ORM Lite. That is, these classes have properties for storing the data they represent, but without any behavior. So if we look at the current booking class in our application that comes with the example, we can see properties for information like ID, which is our primary key, customer name, booking start date, etc. To make changes to our schema, we will need to migrate our database to add these two new columns of feedback and rating of type string and int respectively to the booking class. Since these things won't be initially stored within our booking table or may not be collected at all, they will need to be also nullable. To create a new migration, we will open the migration folder in the Appos project and create a new file called migration1001.cs. Migration classes are run as a separate process from your main application, 
to apply required changes to your application schema in a repeatable way. Repeatability means that the classes used by your migration steps need to be isolated from your running application code. And for this reason, you will see a duplicate booking class in the previous migration step, which does not include the two new fields we need. A migration class can override an up and down method for handling migration and possible rollbacks. There is a DB instance to interact with your database so you can manage this up and down process however you see fit. But there are also some helper methods like migrate t and revert t where we can use class representations of our changes to apply our migrations. In this case, we can have another inner class called bookings containing only the two new columns declared as properties. We can then call the db.migrate passing in the booking type in the up method and db.revert passing in the same booking type in the down method to handle migrations and rollbacks, ensuring that this class is using only the internal booking class and not the one from your main application. So we have some data to use when we're updating our UI, we will also add some rows with these new columns populated with data. We can then finally test our migration process by running npm run migrate from our app host directory. With these two new properties added to our booking model in our application, we can then run our application and we can see our data in the auto query grid. However, when we create or update a booking, we don't yet have any fields that represent the feedback or the rating automatically in our UI. And this is because the create and update are controlled by our request DTOs. Just like any other service stack service, auto query services represent their service contracts as request and response DTOs. And it's this service contract which filters down into our auto forms component using the service deck blazer components library that generates our forms and our UIs. If we were building our custom UIs with the TypeScript or Swift language, for example, we would need to represent these service contracts in the respective native language to ensure a typed end-to-end -end integration. But since we are working with Blazor, we get this rich integration without any additional steps by reusing the same service model projects and related request and response DTOs. Once our changes are made on our server to support this new functionality, we get all the type safety and IntelliSense in our client project straight away. Here we can see customizing our auto query grid view to include the new ratings column, and we get autocomplete on our booking because it's the same model used in our API. Likewise, if we add these two new properties to our create booking request DTO, we can then see this reflected in our new booking option on the auto query grid. However, if we go to edit a booking, we actually don't see these options. And again, this is because we're using separate create and update request DTOs. And in the case of rating and feedback, it doesn't make sense to have it on the create, but we should have it on the update. So just by including the properties on the correct request DTO, we can drive behavior on how the data can be used. These DTOs have no behavior and purely act as messages between your client and server so they can safely be shared since they only represent your API contracts. Having the client and the server in the same language, we get clean API separation while getting instant feedback in our IDEs. And as your Blazor UIs become more customized to handle your business requirements, the more valuable this typed end-to-end -end developer workflow becomes. And when using the Service Stack Blazor components library, you can optimize for user experience while getting large amounts of reuse of your APIs all with the type safety of C-sharp. We have an example of these components at blazor-gallery.servicestack.net where you can explore different running examples along with just some of the possible customizations.
One of the common use cases for the Servostack Blazor components is the use in admin screens where you can progressively get feedback as you improve the workflow. For example, you can start with the auto query grid to get all the functionality you need up front before customizing the interface for how that is presented. If you look in the Servostack Blazor gallery, you will see the custom forms. Logging in, we can see a bookings CRUD you UI with a new and edit bookings. This is a custom use of the auto forms which still handles the create and update process without using the auto query grid itself. Looking at the code below, we can see the grid is just custom HTML with normal Blazor after an API response, while still using the auto forms for the create and edit operations. And again, if you need more control, you can customize both of these components quite heavily before you need to go for a complete custom Blazor solution if required. Another big advantage of using the Servostack Blazor components library is that regardless of which interactivity mode you are targeting for your application, you will be able to rapidly build your systems with this developer workflow while getting the maximum reuse of your Servostack services thanks to components like Auto Query Grid and Auto Forms. We have multiple live deployed versions of the Blazor gallery to highlight the fact that the same code can be deployed and used in different types of Blazor solutions, which you can check out in the Netcore Apps GitHub organization, for which I'll leave a link in the description. This focus on heavy reuse of your request DTOs and your service stack APIs means you can focus on what changes will have the most value based on quick feedback from your users. A larger demonstration of this is in our example application Talent Blazor, where we have a combination of auto query grid and auto forms from the Servostack Blazor components library, along with some fully custom UIs to give the best user experience. By using these typed end-to-end -end client setups that Servostack provides through its Add Servostack reference feature, and here the best experience with Blazor server and WebAssembly, you'll avoid any guesswork about what options are available for the request and data available from the response thanks to your IDE, and your other tooling will make sure any simple mistakes like typos are picked up straight away as you're typing and easily fixed. The Servostack Blazor WASM template gives you the right set of tools for building robust, well-defined APIs using Servostack, as well as the shared c -sharp language on your client thanks to Blazor. This provides a productive development model, especially for line of business applications, enabling you to make changes quickly with confidence thanks to typed end-to-end -end services. And with Servostack now free to use for individuals and open source projects, we hope more developers can discover the advantages of building message-centric APIs. Well that's it for this video. If you have any suggestions or feedback about our templates or videos, let us know in the comments. And if you want to learn more, check out our other videos or documentation and join us in the Servostack community through our Discord and GitHub discussions. Servostack is free for individuals, so anyone is welcome. And as always, thanks for watching.